Hi, I'm Trixie and I'm from our yarn world, a place where people come to uh, find their joy of the yarn crafts. I'm here alone today. Um, Sarah is with her kids and um, I am in my own house today um, because she she's taking care of her kids and um, I wanted to show you that I got done with my uncle's Afghan and so I wanted to just come on here do a short video and show you that so I could send it out to him he lives in Ohio and I want him to get it so um, oh and I did find out from my aunt that she received her ice cream Afghan and she loves it she is um, she is so happy with it and um, she called and talked to me for half an hour um, but half that time it was you know this this yarn is so creamy I just love it I can't wait to just snuggle up with it so I I think it worked out pretty good for her I'm really hoping it works out for my uncle as well so here we go um, just gonna get this out for you and show you how pretty it is so um, let's see so yeah, it's just all kinds of guy colors, and uh, the colors, I have the, the um, tweed white every fourth color. Um, there's three colors in between in order. I just did them in a kind of order all the way down, and um, I did finish with the fall colors here. Um, I started and finished with that. I didn't have enough to do it all the way through. I wish I had because it would have been so, so nice. But um, I did replace it with uh, a black a black tweed. Um, I know it's not showing up real good with that brown right there, but it, it looks really nice. Um, and, you know... It just needed to be Gaia colors, right? I got them out of my stash for ply and did, did a double crochet all the way throughout. Double crochet? Yeah. So, um, it was, it was a, a fun project and I really hope he enjoys it. Um, I enjoyed making it. And Sarah, she really liked the, the colors in this one because... Um, she likes the darker earth tones, so um, yeah, it was it was really really good, really fun. Um, I do have some more to share with you. I have been on quite a journey uh, in June and this beginning of Mar or July. Um, doctor's appointments trying to figure out things, um, getting some stuff taken care of, um, and, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, I saw my doctor on the 7th of June, and um, <laughs> for some reason she thought that I was coming in because I had COVID, which I didn't, but I was treated to the... Um, the whole realm of the hazmat suit, her coming in with that whole thing in and, you know, taking my temperature and doing everything that a nurse would do when I wasn't, I wasn't sick with that. I had some concerns about my thyroid. I had some, I, I still have um, concerns about my throat and, um, you know, when she found out it wasn't COVID, she was she sighed a sigh of relief, but she was also very, um, she, she just wants COVID to be over. She doesn't want to have to go through this so much. And I, I felt for her. I apologized for her having to get dressed up that way and everything. 
and it wasn't my fault it was just the fact that you know there's so many restrictions nowadays and um, anyway she was able to see what I was talking about with my throat and having the lines across and knowing that that was a thyroid problem and having my uh, glands be all swelled up so um, she had me do a thyroid test, a thyroid TSH um, blood work. And that very day, right after the appointment, I, I had that done. And um, I was told that I needed an ultrasound on my thyroid. So, but to continue on with the month of uh, June, um, that, was, that was on the 7th. On the 11th, I went in for a mammogram and um, since there's so many people in my family, so many women in my family who've had breast cancer before, it's, I, I get it yearly and um, every, every year I get a mammogram and a MRI of um, my breast because of having so many family members have the breast cancer. Um, there was no problem, but you know, that came out to be okay, just like it did every year. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, on the 14th, I had a heart monitor removed. Um, I'd had it in for exactly 40 months. Um, I got it in on a Valentine's Day three years ago and um, was able to get it out uh, exactly to the day, for 40 months later. So, and it took a little while to get that out. I mean, it didn't take very long to put it in, but it took a long half an hour to get it out because the skin and the muscles had uh, grown around it. Um, but that's out, removed. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, their their concern was that when I passed out in front of the hospital that it might have been a heart issue. They wanted to try and find it with the monitor. It never proved anything. And I never did have any more problems <clears throat> after that. Um, on the 16th, I had my thyroid uh, ultrasound. That's a different experience. Um, having your um, throat with that kind of uh, uh, the ultrasound mon or the whatever that thing is that they put on there it's a very different feeling um, you know I'm kind of used to it on my stomach when I was pregnant with my kids and and all that kind of stuff but on your throat there's there's so many things in there that are you know, you're breathing and you're swallowing and all that kind of stuff. And it just felt very different to me. And, but it was the least invasive way to test what was going on. And um, that proved, because the blood work proved that I needed the ultrasound, the ultrasound proved that I needed to go further and see an ENT doctor, ears, nose, and throat. Um, but to continue on with June, on the 19th, I had a COVID test done, um, a rapid one, due to um, having a pulmonary function test coming up. And um, they wanted to make sure that I would be able to do it, that my breathing would be okay to do it. And um, But before that, on the 21st, I had the sutures from the heart monitor removed. On the 22nd, I had my pulmonary function test. I've never done that before either. I've had asthma my whole life, my whole life. Um, and I have never had this test done and it was very hard for me to do. And the person who was the technician that was doing it kept telling me she'd never seen anyone uh, react 
to try and to get the test done as I was. Um, but I told her that growing up, my dad, he didn't, uh, he didn't appreciate the fact that um, my asthma was a problem I was going to have to live with. He would, when I was young, he, he would lay my sister, brother, and I down on the carpet um, and have us take a nap. And the carpet is full of dust and dust mites and whatever else, uh, dirt. And I would go into an asthma attack and he'd tell me to quit. Just quit it. So I'd always stifle. And I think that's what I was doing during this pulmonary function test. I, I was stifling and I told the techn technician this too because it was just like, you know, you're telling me to do these kind of breathing exercises for your machine and all I want to do is stifle or to stop it. So I had to really think about it and make sure that I could get this test done so that the technician could send it on to whoever had to read it and I have not found out the, the results of this test yet although she did tell me that she thought I needed to see a pulmonary doctor um, which I have never gone to I, you would think that in all this 55 years of my life that I would have seen a doctor for my asthma and you know specifically specific doctor for that problem but I never have and so um, and I also told her that you know when I was in the hospital for it last uh, July that I that the technician had told me the breathing technician had told me that if the medicines at the hospital weren't working that they weren't working and so in my mind the little inhaler that they're giving me for home wasn't going to work. So I just have not used it. Um, you know, what's it going to do for me if, if the hospital medicines aren't going to work? So, um, and she agreed with that. So, um, yep, that was done on the 22nd. And then on July 6th, a couple days ago, I did go to see the ears, nose, throat doctor, and he said that the nodule that I had on my thyroid, have on my thyroid, is within criteria to see him, but it's so, um, it would be a torture to me to have the fine needle biopsy done at this point because, um, it would have to be done with an ultrasound and um, probably be done several times to try and find the nodule. And um, he referred, or he, he preferred that I would wait another year, have another ultrasound done, and see if it had grown any um, to keep an eye on it. Um, to see if it had grown any. If it has, then they will do the fine needle biopsy. But if it hasn't, it might not. And he doesn't want to put me through the torture. And I I had to agree. I kept telling him, oh, that's good. That's good. I don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, he, he's, um, he is convinced that it could be the acid reflux that I have that's causing my sore throat right now, uh, the roughness in my voice, possibly, you know, I don't know about my swollen glands, but it could be that too. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but um, I am on a special diet now, and I'm hoping to lose um, some weight, to lose the acid reflux to get my blood pressure back down where it needs to be, uh, maybe even stop these allergies that are going on. Uh, I, I would prefer to get off all my meds altogether, which I just named all the ones, the allergy, the um, 
acid reflux and I have two of them that I'm taking for blood pressure. Um, so I'm hoping to get off all those and um, just thanking the Lord that doctors don't want to torture me. So um, I'm going to read the, the scripture now. Uh, and the way of righteous, righteousness is life and in its pathway there is no death. I really felt this one this time because I have been walking with God for a long time. Uh, read my Bible every day, doing my Bible study, um, getting scriptures, trying to get them in my heart. Um, but in the way of righteousness is life. If you're walking with God, you're, you're experiencing life with Him, but He's the one who breathed the breath of life into us. And in its pathway, there is no death. Uh, Proverbs 12, 28. If you're walking with God, He wants to give you abundant life. And on the pathway, as you're walking with Him, there is no death, which means he, He's not going to it, it's, uh, how do I say this? He doesn't want us to experience, um, uh, not that it's not going to be a hard life, you know, he, he doesn't promise us a rose garden or anything, but that we would not, um, suffer the the humiliation or the 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 non-profitable way of not walking with him um we would walk with him on his pathway in righteousness and experience life and that's what i have found is working for me right now um uh, you know, seek the Lord and live. Amos 5, 6. I love that verse. That is my verse for this year. And uh, he, I am seeking the Lord with all I am. And he is proving to me over and over and over again that, I mean, I didn't need the heart monitor. But it was good that the doctors wanted to put it in to prove, you know, what was going on at the time, but I didn't need it. My mammogram came out A-OK, -okay, even though I have family members who have suffered and died with breast cancer and all kinds of cancer. Uh, my um, thyroid just needs to be observed for a year and have another ultrasound next year. No torture. Thank you, Lord. My COVID test came back perfectly normal. I didn't have to worry about that. I have never worried about the COVID test. Uh, suture removals, you know, getting the, the heart monitor taken out, um, having blood work done, having the pulmonary test done. Now I haven't gotten those results back, but I'm not worried. Um, if the Lord is with me, then I have nothing to worry about. And I want to tell you that you don't have anything to worry about either. If you walk with the Lord, you will live. And it's uh, it's a living like no other. It's, he's not going to take all the harmful things away, but he is going to be with you through what whatever you go through. And... He doesn't promise uh, good times, but if you walk with him, good times happen. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I just want you to be encouraged to take away something from this that, you know, we, we are all in this together and we can walk with God or without. Do you want to walk with him and live, have a life? Or are you going to turn away from him and seek 
a, a life without him and which is like a death you just don't want to um, leave him out he's the one who gave you life and you should make sure that you're living your life for him and I'm just I know I'm being bold today but you know I, after all these tests I'm standing here and I'm I'm saying 100% God brought me through and I am going to be the the warrior that he wants me to be the one to fight for him because he fought for me and I just want to I want to be the best person he uh, he made me to be and with that I want you to to know that God loves you and that you can do it and you can do anything with him you know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that's another Bible verse Philippians 413 that's another one I stand on all the time I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me he lives inside of me so because he lives inside of me what what can I not do you know it's it's a good life so um, I just want you to know that that uh, we're still here we are um, able to pray for you if you would like that uh, Sarah and I love praying for people and um, you just leave it in our email address or our, our comments below and we will um, gladly do that we will pray and um, and seek life with you so um, yeah it's all good so um, stitch your way to mental health <laughs>